Hello and welcome to Fire Takeaways. I'm Suli Azman, joined together with uh, Kusu Chuang. And today is Friday, May 6th, the 127th day of 26 inch, uh, which we have 239 more days left. Uh, anyway, you know, we got a lot of things happening uh, this week. Uh, Chuang, let's briefly look at what happened this week. Sarawak state election is set to be on tomorrow, 7th of May 2016. It's testing time for Prime Minister Dr. Sina Jibraza and various national coalitions. Yeah, we'll be talking about that later, but it does look as if it's going to be a foregone conclusion with the incumbents winning. Right, correct. You know, um, uh, and of, of course we have a lot of things going on. Missing helicopter is a very tragic and uh, sad day today because it involved Dr. Nareda Kasno and we're going to talk about that later on. Honda Malaysia confirmed that Takata Airbags Infratis did rupture two um, uh, fatal crashes last week. Yeah, so you can't trust the Japanese, you can't trust the Americans, you can't trust the Germans. Who else should we um, trust? Malaysia, because they can still make cars with Proton, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, and of course before we look up the bursa, ECB to stop issuing 500, US, uh, 500 euro bill. Anyway, the, now, the war on cash is in full swing. It is, you know, I mean, we, you've seen euro starting out with Mario Draghi, now we have Hariko Kuroda start They took the time it. because Malaysia used to have the 500 ringgit bill and the 1000 ringgit bill. Correct. That was wiped out in the 80s, I think. And of course, I think they're going to introduce some 200 uh, euro bill you know, right. going forward. But That's anyway, Bursa Malaysia today, it closed up 4 points high or 0.3% at 1,649 points. Now for the week, it was down 1.4% or 24 points. Now, um, you know, from 1,673 points ago, apparently Danny Wong from Arica Capital said the stock closed out today due to attractive valuations with 1.58 billion shares today, today worth 1.8 billion ringgit. That's right. So stocks have moved up, Max, uh, AWC, of course, AirAsia and Maybank. Down as well, Hatalega, yeah, Gabagon, AQRS, and is it Acres or AQRS? Acres, uh, right? Yeah, AQRS. Well, you say tomato, I say tomato, you say potato, I say potato, right? Yes, so, uh, as long as we understand <laughs> that, you know, that should be fine. chemicals itself was down, yeah. Yes, and of course, um, today, Chong, I, I, I don't know you would not agree to this, but March export data, you know, was released today. 66.6 yeah. .6 billion ringgit, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, exports recorded in March. Now, does this have an effect on the stock market? No, no, because it's lagging data, right? Because markets move on speculation and hearsay and what's going to happen in the future, not stuff that's happened in the past. Yes, and of course, looking at the regional shares, Nikkei today uh, closed down 0.25% to 16,000. Uh, that 16,000 uh, around that region. Hang Seng was down 1.66%, as well as China CSI 300, you know, um, which was down 2.6%. It's a sea of rate, you know. Um, and I, think this I think the key fear is that people are selling stocks because of the jobs data coming out of the US tomorrow. They think that if the jobs data is strong, the Federal Reserve might have bet more ammunition to raise rates in June, which means a strong dollar, bad for emerging markets, bad for Malaysia. Yes, correct. And this uh, non-farm non, uh, payroll data today is going to uh, impact the ringgit. Now, the ringgit is trading at around 4 ringgit and at 5pm today it was 4.0072 against the greenback and Fed officials maintain that a June hike remains possible. Now, Although they do if they do that, they'd be like shooting themselves in the foot because it's not the strongest economy in the world right now. Yes, correct. And I think, uh, you know, um, some people are saying that, you know, policy central bankers have run out of policy ammunition, basically. You can't do much more. Yeah, okay. So, oils at 45 bucks. So, the ring is quite weak. It's gone past the four ringgit level, despite the fact that oil's at 45 bucks. So, that's pretty good. And then, of course, we know that oil is going up because of the Canadian fires as well as the uh, conflicts in Libya, which is curtailed production. Yes, correct. And, you know, and, and I mean, I think a lot of research and analysts are being expecting the oil price to go higher, you know, across uh, uh, the board. Now, let's have a look uh, into the, um, you know, um, uh, so neutral things. State elections. Yes, correct. 11 Sarawak State election, uh, which is due tomorrow. 82 seats for, up for contest with 46, uh, 42 seats needed for a majority. Now, this is going to be a tough time for the Prime Minister, basically, as I said earlier, you know, because um, we are going to see a three-way fight, you know, between BN, led by Chief Minister Tanti Adnan Satem, DAP, led by Chong, and also PKR, led by Baru Bian. Yeah, so uh, the last time, five years ago, BN retained 77 of the seats. Oh, sorry, 77% of the seats, or 71 seats in total. This year, they said there's going to be more. Yes, and of course, we have this notable forecast saying The Economist of all the magazines, you know, a very notable one in London, said that Mr. Najib's coalition will sweep the polls and the victory will be probably paddled as proof that the Prime Minister retains popular support. But they did note, however, that the government's advantage in Tarawat is slowly eroding. That's right. So that's a neutral thing. A sad thing, of course, which made us sad is the fact that the helicopter went off. Now, we've had a whole history of helicopter crashes in Malaysia. We've had, of course, Tan Sri Yaya from DRB in the uh, old days. And then, of course, last year, JJ, uh, yes. Tan Sri JJ, passed away as well in the helicopter crash. 
you know, maybe it's because, I, I don't know, um, maintenance issues maybe? I, I do not know, you know, and of course coupled with the fact that um, we also have not only helicopters but also the aviation uh, uh, crashes, the MH370 yeah. and of course the MH17. So in other words, don't fly, don't ride, uh, drive proton cars because they need the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct, and that would certainly bump up their profits. Anyway, on the international front, Lo and behold, we have this Donald Trump to be the next US president. Well, potentially, potentially, because he goes up against Hillary Clinton, she's gaining ground against Bernie Sanders, and we might have Donald Trump as president of the United States of America, the new voters. Yes, okay, and of course we have all these many policies going on. Immigration, for instance, saying that, you know, um, he wanted to have a total ban on Muslims. And yeah, it is, he doesn't like 30% of the global population, but that's what it is. Um, he wants to impose a 35% tariff on imports to help protect the US economy. That's, of course, um, riddled with, with uh, dilemmas for the American economy. He wants to cut taxes as well. And of course, he also wants to build that stupid wall that, you know, <laughs> the president of Mexico has said he is not going to he wants to, he wants to build a wall on the Mexican border, and then he wants to get the Mexicans to pay for it. <laughs> I mean, that is just the greatest joke of all time. Yeah. Anyway, and of course, you know, many other policies now. Whether that, he, <coughs> whether he is up, uh, you know, uh, you know, going to be the next president. I mean, this still remains to be seen. But things that made us a little bit happier, you have. What made me happy, I think, for me as well, because we don't have any much good news, except for the fact that you're wearing a bright red shirt. <laughs> you're like yeah. a firecracker, Max. You walked in and the whole world has to put on sunglasses. Yeah, I mean, and I'll say, so no, um, I am on fire, basically, you know, I'm going full blown. But anyway, next week, we've got a lot of things coming up. Um, Tuesday, the first quarter reports for Tan Chong. Uh, on Thursday, Media Prima going to announce the first quarter results, IPI data, and also manufacturing sales. Friday, Datuk Muhammad Ibrahim, the new governor, That's is right. going to Presenting announce... Presenting Q1 data, Q1 Correct. GDP data. Correct, and in which Moody's today released that they are going to ease at 4% because of several factors. You know, you have weak consumer activities, they also noted one of these candles that would cloud the investment uh, growth in Malaysia and also China's slowdown, which is you know a part of the major export destination for Malaysia. We should have a little wager actually. We should wager on the fact that maybe the new Bank Negara governor might not just ease interest rates, but as well as uh, ease a lending guidelines for the property sector. That's very easy for him to do. Yes, correct. And would you, would you think that Dr. Muhammad we are going to also ease the monetary policy as well by you know cutting uh, down uh, interest well, rates? Well, that's a forecast from Citigroup for a 50 basis point cut by the end of this year. So. 25 basis points now, and another 25 basis points in September. Who knows, right? Easy. Yeah, sorry. Okay, now that's all we have today. You know, um, before we end, you know, it's going to be Mother's Day on Sunday the yeah. 8th, and of course, it's are, you, are you Mother's Day, Max? <laughs> are, you, are you a mother's boy? I think I, so too. I think like my mother's boy. the most. I suppose. Are you, Chuang? I am very much a mother's boy. Yeah, sorry. You know, maybe perhaps that you need to, you know, uh, bring your wife to some good treat for a Sunday. You know, yeah, she's yeah. a total mother as well. Of course, yes, your own yes, mother. Yes. Anyway, um, for more information, you can always uh, log on to our website at www.hmarkets.com or grab a copy of the H Financial Daily or the H Week we should be out uh, tomorrow morning at any good uh, newsstand. You know, have a good weekend, good night, and good luck.